Hello lovely people, I really really don't know how to start this video apart from saying that this video is gonna be epic. Now I know from very beginning that uh, I won't be able to put everything that I want in one video. So it'll have to be at least a few different videos. And the first one, I think we're gonna go through the whole concept of what it is, why I have all of this and what I'm gonna do with it. And then in the next videos, uh, we're gonna do the, all the data and everything. So before we start, I wanna say a huge, huge thank you to a few people that contributed to this massive project. I'm gonna call this a ultimate mid-range shootout because I know that people love mid-ranges and just drivers in general and they want as much information as possible. So huge huge thank you to Peter from PS Sound. Probably this is the person that doesn't need any introduction and probably you know that the main kind of gear that he uses is Helix stuff so like Brax and Helix and he uses a lot of Steg stuff as well in his installs. Then the second person is Am from Blade Ice that he supplied a one an audio mid-ranges so he is the one that in the UK sells one audio stuff uh, he as well sells Moscone B2 and all the other stuff he has his own shop if you remember I have my infinite baffle subwoofer from him and he sent me these mid-ranges so these are one audio mid-ranges then another person is Gitis from Lithuania from Audio Status. They have a YouTube channel as well. However, their YouTube channel is in Lithuanian. But if you want to see installs and stuff, just follow them. He has a shop called Audio Status and they do ship worldwide. So he sent me some data and stuff, Fostex. I believe this is a scan speak as well. He sells car audio, home audio and pro audio gear uh, as well. So if you want, for example, data and stuff, because it's quite expensive to import it in the Europe or UK, whatever, uh, he ships them from Lithuania. Another person is Frank. Everybody knows Frank, that he kind of supplied all the gear, almost all the gear that's in my car, and he sent me some stuff from Hong Kong because he's local, he knows the market and everything, so there's some stuff that you can see with Chinese writing, some boxes have no labels, some are very fancy, like this one, so he sent me quite a few things as well. He sent me all the Alpine stuff as well. I will be pulling my Alpine status mid-ranges from my car, for this test as well. Another person that I want to thank is Richard from UK. So he sent me one of the Dayton mid-ranges. I believe this one, I'm not sure because I have three Daytons. I believe this one and this Fatal Pro is his as well. And I want to thank myself because I bought these two Fatal Pros. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to unbox all these speakers. I'm going to put them there just for you to see. And then we're going to be talking about what is this whole project about. So this is a site that you don't usually see, at least me. This for me, it looks like it's not real, but I have all of these mid ranges and I will be testing them. So the question is why? I didn't notice that quite a few people like the videos when I do about specific drivers. So about tweeters, when comparing mid-ranges and that kind of stuff. In SQ, one of the most important driver, uh, you cannot kind of say that is the most important, but probably some agree that one of the most important drivers is the mid-range because it covers the widest area of the spectrum and it covers the voices which are supposed to sound natural to us. I am planning to make a video about tweeters as well, so that is in the plan. I have quite a few different tweeters to test, but for this one, we're going to have a look at various sizes mid-ranges and not only different sizes, but different price points as well, because there is a huge difference between some of these drivers. For example, this is a Brax ML3 that cost, I believe, over 500 pounds a pair in the UK. And the cheapest is going to be probably something like the Fatal Pro, which is like, no, uh, that one, which is like 20 pounds a pair or something. And it's various price brackets. So you have a pair for $20, 30, 50, 100, $150, something like that, all the way up to four, five, six hundred dollars. So what is the purpose of this video? The purpose of this video is to objectively compare very, very different mid-ranges. And by objectively, I mean taking actual measurements. So I will talk about what I'm actually gonna measure, but first I wanna say, why do we need that? 
Everybody, when they're choosing any kind of driver, everybody wants kind of feedback or data, whatever, to help them to choose the driver. Now, every driver, not necessarily mid-range, it could be mid-base or a subwoofer, it has to fit a kind of specific purpose. And it's kind of difficult to say only from a picture. And when you have on the manufacturer's website, our range, power, and impedance, and nothing else. So I hope that this video, with all the measurements and everything, is going to help people to decide which driver should you choose for your specific application, for your specific install, and your specific requirements for the system. So what is this project is, what is not, and what can you expect? If you want me to listen to all of these drivers and tell you which one sounds the best, that is not going to happen. If you want that, you can stop the video and go somewhere else in uh, any kind of audio file web page that do that kind of stuff. I will be providing raw actual measurements of all of these drivers. So I have 24 drivers. However, these two, I think I'm going to disregard them So because they're dome mid-ranges, so totally different from all the rest. So 22 drivers in total. The sizes vary from 3 inch, which this is close to like 2.5 inch, but like 3 inch, 3.5 inch, and all the way up to 4 inch with it. these are the biggest ones. So I think now it would be the best to introduce you to the drivers one by one. So in this video, I'm just going to show you the drivers. We're going to see what are we working with, what kind of price point, where can you buy them and that kind of stuff. And then, because it's going to be a long project that I will need to do a load of measurements, it's going to take me probably a week or two. So in the upcoming videos, I'm going to show you the measurements and all the data. So I think let's start with this side because uh, I laid them out just for me myself to remember where they came from. These are Peter's drivers, these are from Gitis, these are from Frank, and some of them are mine somewhere in the middle. So let's start with the big boys. Brax ML3. This is, it feels very light, it has a very weird cone. I don't know what material is it, but it's like, it's not smooth. It feels like as if sprayed with a bed line or something. It kind of has a rig it, so I don't remember material. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the specs. I just want to introduce you what kind of drivers they are. Then we have Steg MS30. So these retail for about like 300 pounds a pair or something like that. It looks like they have an aluminium cone and very nice looking drivers. This is the big boy that Peter loves a lot. Uh, Steg MSS3. They cost, I don't remember, 350 or something pounds, but these are big boys. You can see there's a massive surround, so you cannot remove this grill, or at least I don't know how to remove it. I'm not going to remove it because I don't want to break it, but these are big boys. They're massive, and when Peter says that they play low, I have no doubt that they play low with this surround and this cone area. So this is the only one that I can compare it with is the Faithful Pro 4-inch because all the others are like babies compared to this. This is almost like a 4-inch woofer. I do apologize for the sounds because I have like birds and dogs and everything. It is warm outside. It is summer. So, you know, it is what it is. But they look very, very cool. They look amazing. Next in line, we have some Dayton's. So one of them is the smaller version, RS75. They are advertised as three inch, but to me, it looks like more like two and a half inch. It's a very, very small with a face plug that is not connected to the cone. So this is going to be something similar to my Alpine status, but I'm Alpine status is a bit bigger. This is a bigger version. This is from Richard. He used these in his car and he won something in last year in Emma with these mid ranges. He used to have them in custom A pillars. And again, uh, face plug not attached to the cone. I think paper cone, but yeah, big boy with a big magnet. Now, Gide sent me this as well, which is a Dayton ND91. And this is, I don't know if I can call it a mid-range. It looks to me like a woofer. It has loads of X-Max. Uh, I believe it's a metal cone. I'm not sure. But it will be interesting to see how this performs against all the other ones. Because if this is a woofer, then we're going to see uh, how a small woofer compares with an actual mid-range driver. The suspension is quite soft, the surround is big, and so the surround is very similar, probably even bigger than MSS3. Yeah, a, wo a woofer mid-range. 
Then we have this, which is SB Acoustics SB10, 3 inch mid range. This is, I believe, it's a plastic basket. It feels plasticky, but uh, a normal mid range. I do believe these are quite cheap, like probably 15, 20 pounds per driver, something like that. Then we have a La Voce. So La Voce is, I believe, Italian brand, a uh, fan. 0303. It is a pro audio brand similar to Fatal Pro. They make pro audio drivers, big ones as well, and this is one of the mid ranges that they have. Again, paper cone. It looks like very small surround, but it does have some X Max plastic basket, Neodymium motor, very small, very tiny. I think this is going to perform very nice. I'm very excited to see that one. Then we have this. This is a driver uh, that everybody knows, ScanSpeak 10F. There's a 12F version uh, that have a few different versions, I believe, but this is it's a classic. Everybody knows the driver, everybody loves it, so it's going to be very interesting to see how it compares against others. This ScanSpeak drivers are quite on the expensive side, so this I believe it's like 120 pounds each, so 250 for a pair. Very close to, I believe, these ones, which are like close to 300 pounds as well. So, scan speak. Very interesting driver to see. This one is the one that I personally I am the most excited about checking out. This is the new One Audio driver. So One Audio, if you don't know, it's a company that makes Infinite Baffle subwoofers, the one that I have in there. And as well, they released a line of almost pro audio mid-bass drivers because they're very light, very high sensitivity, 8-inch mid-bass mid -bass drivers designed for Infinite Baffle application. Uh, they release these mid-ranges and they do have tweeters as well. So with one audio, if you want, now you can have the whole set, all three-way front, plus infinite baffle sub. So this is going to be very interesting. And this was sent to me by Am um, from Blade Ice. He sells them in the UK and they retail for, I believe, £160 a pair, something like that. Then we have this. So this is a Fostex. Gita sent me this from uh, Audio Status from Lithuania. Nominal power, 5 watts. So Fostex drivers are known kind of in home audio because they make very high sensitivity and apparently very clean drivers. They're not as cheap as the other ones. They might be on the expensive side. And if you are following Peter and if you're following Eddie, so Eddie in his Citroen has a five inch Fostex drivers. I'm not saying the model because I'm not sure what he has, but he has a Fostex drivers and he's winning competitions like crazy with those mid ranges. So this is going to be very interesting to see because as far as I know, a lot of Fostex drivers, they have have extremely extremely low Q and they are designed for like horn applications where the driver at the bottom end has to be loaded quite a lot. I'm not sure about these. We're gonna check it out and we're gonna see. Fostex. Then the next in the list, this one, that is the first time I've ever seen this company. So this company is a Cartesian, Cartesian, whatever, VIB 70. And I just checked it out. It is a French company, uh, apparently quite good. And these, one of them costs 50 pounds, something like that. So a pair, a hundred pounds for a pair. It is a plastic basket, Neo motor, very interesting design, big, massive voice call. So I'm not sure about the power handling. It has this accordion surround, which is kind of typical for pro audio mid ranges. So this one is going to be very interesting to check out because I've never heard of the company, but if Gita send it to me, it means it's good. Now these three, these three, you know, these are my Fatal Pros. This is Richard's Fatal Pro 3FE25 with a big, big magnet in the back. This is a different version, 3FE22 with a Neo magnet which is much more compact and this is a four inch version the brand new that was released last year fe42 it's like 94 db efficient neo motor very soft suspension uh it's going to be very interesting to see this one and this is probably the only one that we can actually compare directly to the mss3 because they're very similar in size you can see four inch four inch all the other ones are tiny compared to these so these are going to be big boys and all of this corner is frank 
from Hapa King. So he lives in Hong Kong and he has access to all the, as we call it, Chinese stuff. Some of it is cheap, some of it is more expensive. So I'm going to pull out, as I mentioned, my Alpine status driver from my car because I use it daily. So for the testing, I will pull it out just to put it there. Then we have these Alpines, which is 30 MC, the mid ranges that in my review, I didn't really like them, but for comparison, it's going to be very nice to see. I do believe they're discontinued, but eh, why not? And all of these, they're kind of no name things. They do have names. For example, I believe this one came in a very, very nice box. It is High Fine driver whatever it is it has this grill that is similar to the stag and i do believe it's not removable then we have this one um, as well high fine just a different model hiat 35 i'm not sure how much he paid for these but i do believe it's like uh, i want to say 20 to 30 40 dollars per driver so they're not expensive, like 40, 50 bucks for a pair. They're not expensive. And it's going to be very interesting to see uh, how they perform. Because if you can buy a driver for $30 from AliExpress and it performs good, why not? Why shouldn't you buy it? These two, they're slightly different, but slightly the same. So both of them are, uh, I believe, plastic uh, basket neo motor with some shielding they have kind of the same thing which is i don't know the writing 12 watts only uh very low power and yeah they look nice one is a yellow looks similar to focals I, I don't remember is it focal flags that has yellow cone but yeah uh very light uh very cheap we'll see how they're going to perform this one as well feels very very light doctor da er exigian hi whatever Whatever, it's going to be very interesting to see how this performs. And the last one, this, which which is like a very small cone, like a three inch, but a very big basket, like similar to SB Acoustics, what they do with their drivers. They have very big baskets for a small cone. Neo magnets, nothing really special. Sound, whatever, yeah. And I have these two dome mid ranges, so probably I'm not gonna include them there, but just to show you, this is a peerless driver that is available to buy in China. Peerless dome driver, nothing special, probably like seven, ten pounds per driver. I don't know. And these are more interested. So these, I think they might be comparable to the Morels that I tested before. And I put it in the Honda Jazz if you watched it. So yeah, fun stuff. So these are all the drivers. There's quite a lot of them. So it's going to be a lot of testing. Now, in regards to the testing and in regards to the results, just a heads up, all the results that we're going to get from all these testing, it's not necessarily to say that one driver is better than the other driver. Because as I mentioned, they're different sizes, different materials, different motor structures, different price points. So it's not directly comparable. You cannot compare uh, this Dayton with this Brax. It's it's not comparable. It's not feasible to compare them because all of these drivers potentially will need different crossover points to kind of manage the excursion. All of these drivers are going to have probably different distortion, probably different power handling. So it's not directly comparable, but when we're going to have all the data, I think it will be easier for us to determine which driver fits better in a certain application or install. So what I'm going to be checking and what I'm going to be measuring. First of all is the frequency response on axis and uh, maybe off axis. This is the thing. I don't know how to do the off axis and have it fair to all the drivers because the main thing that I want to do is to compare these drivers <clears throat> under not ideal but the same conditions and circumstances so you cannot say that oh it's not fair how you measured so on axis it's kind of simple you put in a big baffle and you measure it on axis then near field response as well if you take a near field response you can check the cone breakup and everything and near field response is going to tell us a lot about the actual roll off of the driver and as i mentioned where the cone breakup is distortion measurements are extremely important one of the most important things in the whole driver performance and it's never mentioned anywhere it's never measured nobody 
cares about it, but this is the thing that everybody should care about, especially at the bottom end when we determined how low a driver can play. So obviously, like a small three inch driver is not going to play as low as a big four inch driver. And obviously, it's not going to play as loud with the same distortion. So I will be measuring distortion. I will take impedance sweeps of all of these drivers again just to see where their resonant frequency is because there's one resonant frequency that you can find in a data sheet and most of the time the actual resonant frequency is slightly different so we're going to have a ballpark where it is uh, most of the driver is going to be something around i want to say 100 to 150 hertz i know these are very low like 80 or 90 hertz some of them are going to be much higher probably this is going to be like close to 200 hertz but it's just interesting to see and it's interesting to see if we're going to see any wiggles in the impedance graph which indicates some kind of resonance due to the motor structure or the cone or the surround or something else. And another thing that I would really like to do is to measure the off-axis frequency response. Now, if you imagine 22 drivers measuring five angles each, it is a lot of measurements and it is a lot of work. So I don't know how I will do this, but I'm gonna try. In order to make sure that all the drivers are tested under the same kind of conditions, what I need to do is to break them in because some of these drivers are secondhand, like this, like the Alpine, I believe these Dayton's might be, uh, but most of them are brand new. So when the driver is brand new, it's gonna perform slightly different when it's broken in. So I will need to spend at least one hour just breaking them in close to fs i do have my alpine dsp that has eight channels of amplified so i will use those eight channels just to break eight drivers at a time maybe i'm going to connect them in series parallel just to play all of them at the same time i don't know but it's going to take half a day probably just to break in the drivers then the other thing is the test baffle most of them are going to be kind of similar size it's like three and a half inch so the hole one hole is going to fit quite a few different drivers but not all because the smaller ones will need a smaller hole and the bigger ones will need a bigger hole so instead of making different maybe i'm going to make different baffles i'm not sure yet but i need one big massive baffle ideally i want to do the iec or ic or whatever it's called the baffle that has specific dimensions depending on the diameter of the driver so i think i need like one meter times one meter or something put it in almost in the corner there and yeah i need to do that research as well the other thing to be fair ideally you would want to mount all of the drivers flush to the baffle however I think it's going to be extremely difficult to do because you can see that some of them are square, some of them have that shape, some of them are bigger baskets, some of them are smaller baskets. So I don't know if it will be possible for me to mount every driver flush. So if you have any suggestions how to make all of this comparison as fair as possible, please put it in the comment and I will take it into the consideration. But for now, the simplest way is just to cut a hole and to mount them not flush because mounting flush every driver who is going to take me months to do the measurements and i think this is pretty much it this is an introductionary video into the ultimate mid-range shootout the measurements will follow probably not this week maybe next week or maybe the week after but i just want to let you know that all this nice weather all the sunshine and everything it's not going to go to waste but it's going to go for you the public to educate you and to give you more data and more measurements. So if you stuck to the very end of the video, I would like to ask you for a favor. Please go to Facebook and YouTube. Find those people that I mentioned. Find Peter, find Blade Eyes, find Hepa King, find audio status, like their pages, comment, say thank you, say nice things to them because they provided this for me to test just from their own generosity. I did ask them, they provide it. I said thank you. Now it's your turn to say thank you. And just a heads up, I'm not going to keep any of these drivers. Probably these because Frank, what he sends is just, it's not economically viable for me to send everything back to China. So I'm going to keep the Chinese drivers. But all of the other ones are going to go back to the owners. They're going to go into the cars. They're going to be installed and they're going to be used. So don't think that I have all of these drivers. I own them. These are not mine. These are provided by nice, generous people that care about car audio and they care about their product so much that they're willing to provide it for independent testing and just 
for the public to know how specific drivers perform. So again, thank you very much for the guys that provided these drivers. Thank you, the viewer, for watching this. Stay tuned for the future videos and I will see you in the next one.